I, don't I do wrong. not endorse anything said <laughs> in this stream. <laughs> Greetings everyone, I'm of course Director Arctur with Arctur Labs. Welcome to the Saturday guest show. As usual, I've got Angry Froman here managing the chat, so if your messages to me don't come through, it's all their fault. Just remember that in the future. It's, it's why I really have these people on it. Um, I mean, to help me better manage the chat, not just to divert blame. Right. Uh, well, I have with me this time, as my guest, Memes of Destruction. Which is the only name I know you by. Uh, oh. I assume memes will do. Oh, yes, but of course, but of course. Hey, guys, what's going on? Greetings. Welcome to, uh, well, more of a teleconferencing than anything. But, uh, you know, the humble set as it. Yes, uh, yes. We, yeah, I wouldn't want to disclose my location because uh, the Wakanda Guard are, they're very strict. Well, you know, I've, uh, Long said I'm a proud Wakanda, and I stand by that because I want to help Wakanda develop its diversity, because it's not diverse at all. Uh, why, when I repatriated there, I basically increased diversity by uh, at least 25%. Oh. And if we just get Rubmog the Orc there, and maybe the Hulk, we can really bring it up even further, because right now, oh boy, just a uniform shade throughout. But uh, I wanted to start off with something right here. I really like this intro you made. I, I do not endorse I think you like this part in this stream. Hey guys, what's going on? You you, you may recognize so it from such a dragon bite. Uh, three hours. I am uh, I am doing a guest bit on. Uh, yes, I, I actually went on and got new glasses and oh, they have golden frames. I can imagine. Sure. Oh, it's, it's very very classy. But, uh, I had a pair of very similar glasses. I wore on April uh, Fools when I was convincing, trying to convince everyone that my real name was Bob Burtson and that I started this. It's often the downturn of a major and, uh, crack spree. I'm sure absolutely nothing will go wrong. My, my apologies so, uh, for some of our yeah, initial interactions. I believe I refer to you as Dr. Sarazal. Peace out, everybody. Uh, not really. Robert. Oh, okay. Uh, appreciate it. Look, um, I've had a lot of really hostile guests on this show. You're going to have to try if you really want to try to get under my skin. It's not going to happen casually. Um, uh, and odds are, I if you're been... really trying, I will try to deny you that anyway, because that's the only thing that makes sense. I mean, if you want, if someone's trying to piss you off, why on earth would you allow them to? I, I have been callousing Ark for some time. Isn't that right, Arkabut? I see. I thought it was an Arkit or Bobblehead, actually. Oh, I have one of those. Uh, should... No, I might have left it off of the uh, shelf here, but as you can see, quite the collection thus far. I'll have to make a few more. It, 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 is, it is a very nice collection. I believe uh, they might be collectible at some point. We could only hope they're like Pokemon. Got to catch them all. Well, uh, the only people who have copies of these that they could put on a screen where it could be copied and pasted are the people they're made of, so... Oh! I suppose so. But, That's uh, intellectual to, property. Yep, I've had to make that mini uh, deal space. Uh, where, uh, by the way, I hope you enjoy your avatar piece, whatever. It's on transparent background, stop it whatever you like. Oh, I, I, I do, I do. Just as we were chatting a little bit ago, I just, I, I appreciate this iteration of the blue eyes white dragon, a la Popeye there, with the massive forearms. Because as we were discussing, I went back and watched the 1980 trailer of Popeye with Robin Williams, and oh my God, you have a man that literally has his arms full of tumors, his glaucoma acts up, he's a smoker and everything. Yet when he gains the nutrients from that can of spinach, man, it empowers him to a level, and he's accepted myself. You listen to him, it's, I ends with I am, and I all that I am, I'm Papa the Sailor Man, choo choo. Heck, 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 heck. Yeah, it's a very uplifting message. It's a pity the movie tanked, although. Well, you were saying it could be got woke, go broke. I I feel like there may be other factors there. Could be, could be. Uh, well, we may never know. Uh, I think certainly making it into a musical was a questionable step, but certainly it was a memorable film in its own right. I remember seeing it, 
and that was so long ago I can't remember when exactly. I just have these vague images of singing, dancing, and Wimpy trying to eat a hamburger. I I, I remember Wimpy trying to trying to weasel his way out of his his debts for those burgers and everything. But to be fair, there was a hungry man, and when a man or woman is hungry, we should try to help feed them. Mm, yes, although. One of the key features of Wimpy is that he's in no danger of starving. Oh. We have the Killing Joker in chat. Oh! Hey! Oh, what up, AJ? What's happening, brother? So, Miss Steam donated a lemon, said go suck on a lemon. Uh, I like lemons. Joker said call Ark Slappy. Steam said call him Miss Steam Slave. Joker said call him late for dinner. Steam said call him Tassel Daddy. Uh, I get that. And and uh, Joker responded with Tassel Daddy. Yeah, that's a uh, I've been following this Arcturus fellow even in side quest, even though it's clearly not me. Just very similar. Oh, we can and... call you TD, TD. So people might get you confused with the bank. Arcturus, your goals of becoming a billionaire might be uh, coming sooner than you thought. If they keep on he showing up for followed... those, absolutely, it goes up five hundred bucks each time someone actually meets the price. Anyhow. Um, he, he followed up the uh, the tassel uh, tassel daddy with shank shake and I quote shake them milkers woohoo that's an interpretation yes hmm. so it'd it's... probably be much raspier in oh. all honesty so, regrettably uh... I must interrupt this for some news uh, one of my dear fans in the audience one. Lieutenant Knives recently got married, so I just thought I'd, you know, interrupt everything to stress that we're all very happy for Mr. and Mrs. Knives pictured here. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Knives. Boy, let's dwell on this and anything but uh, whatever we were talking about previously. I've already blocked Dude, dude, congratulations, Mr. Knives. Dude, I'm sorry I haven't chatted with you for a while. Dude, good for you, man. That's freaking yeah, awesome. It's, well, I stress at the very least, it's object. Well, it's an object. No. It's objectively oh. an achievement. There we go. Well, exactly. And who can argue with that hat? Yes, it's a very nice hat. And I, you know, it's really hard to tell much from picture, but I said this much to him when he informed me about this. That's his wife there, and she looks like just the right sort of devious for Lieutenant Nimes, given what I know about Lieutenant Nimes. Just really mischievous. I immediately liked her. So, good for you, Lieutenant Nimes. And... Best of luck on your new marital life. Achievement unlocked. Indeed. Cool. But, what, what we got? Yes, he was calling himself sappy, and I was trying to stress that that's only a weakness if you are sappy, knowing that it's being used against you. Otherwise, it just means you're not entirely dead inside yet. Well, I mean, I think that's something more of us need. Yes. More people should not be so entirely dead inside. Anyhow, um, right, back to you then. How long have you been at this YouTube thing yourself? Well, it, it would depend on which chapter you're looking at. This, uh, I, I go back as far as over a decade now, as I more recently happened to remember the password for an old YouTube channel pre-Google purchasing it back in 2009. Uh, that that may be actively used at some point. We'll see. Uh, but as of this current iteration, I think this is probably what, like two, three years now, something like that. Probably at some point, probably post post election of uh, President Trump here. Uh, just kind of like, oh, I'm I'm watching a lot of things on the internet, and like the previous generation of broadcast TV, I just eventually kind of get tired at uh, just yelling at a screen. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go out there and I'll, I'll I'll yell and I'll say and do stuff and things on the internet, and uh, yeah, just put up had some old content, but basically I would hop on live streams with different folks, whether it's uh, Mad Dodge Productions, Vash, uh, various other folks who you occasionally have been gracious enough to invite me on. Just kind of get your uh, your online persona out there and talk to people, produce some things. And now I'm to the point where it's like, all right, we're in the 2020 election. I happen to like talking politics, religion, and stuff like that. You know, all the things that they told you, uh, yeah, you shouldn't talk about that. So, the forbidden <laughs> something, topics, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, now it's, it's only forbidden to discuss one half of the political. Funny how that worked out. 
Well, I mean, it seems to shift in everything. I mean, I, I take the reason why people often said that is because these are things that people are passionate about, that uh, when we come across people we disagree with, we uh, we don't often take it as well as we probably should. But uh, regardless of that, hey, the Internet's a thing. We have the social medias. We've chosen to go down this route. So, hey, if we're going to go down this route, let's do it as well as we can. We'll often do it badly, like Professor Peterson says, but... At least if we're doing it and we try to come at it from a more positive angle rather than, okay, do I want to just like help this person come to a place or do I just want to destroy this person because I'm going to earn points with my tribe? What are we actually trying to do? Uh, uh, We're seeing a lot more of the destroying or really, strictly speaking, what I'm seeing a lot of is not even destroying so much as serving people up to each other to be destroyed. Well, th- this is another thing because the positioning of people and things, whether or not, oh, this is my champion on this side or this is our champion. We just want them to just start smashing heads because it's going to make for good entertainment. I mean, that just brings me back to the good old WWF days before the World Wildlife Foundation won that lawsuit against Vince. Yes, um, there, there is that. There's a certain certain underturn, undertone of gross insincerity in it all. And that's one of the things. And this is one of the reasons why President Trump has been effective. You can argue, you can say, oh, well, that's stupid or anything. But the thing is, it's entertaining. Donald Trump makes for good TV and good ratings. You can argue against everything that he does. You can think it's bad. But all I realized when when my brother Stats pointed out that at one point CNN was covering an empty podium awaiting Donald Trump. Well, Bernie Sanders is giving a speech in front of tens of thousands of people. I'm like, okay, something's wrong here. This don't seem right. Well, that might tell you who they felt was the greater threat at the time. Yeah, yeah, but but regardless, hey, I mean, it is what it is. The past is prologue. The present is now. I realize you disagree with that arc. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. We can move along. Not necessarily. Again, uh, this was... When I disagreed with you previously, my argument was, in defense of my stance, that time travel does not work and is just complete, utter rubbish. Um, Past being prologue is fine, I just don't really agree with it being mutable. You can can fudge the details, you can have everyone believing it's a certain way, but you can't really change the past. Is it due to a lack of quantity of DeLoreans in good working order? Um, possibly. Also, there wasn't... Look, I love the DeLorean so much so that when I started playing Rocket League, that was my first purchase. But, uh, all I wanted from it was flight. A DeLorean that can fly is plenty enough for me. Have you petitioned Elon Musk? You know, I haven't. I should consider that. I just don't think I possibly get his ear for even the briefest moment. I've there gotten be... Notch's ear. Hmm? I've gotten hmm. Notch's ear once or twice. Okay, well, that, this Why one... not get... Look, there's probably some merit to this. Uh, think about it. Four wheels, there are quadcopter. Fl- just, you know, you can get those turbines spinning fast enough. Why should it be car-shaped? Yeah, well, I mean, you could do it. I mean, where they have like the newer actual. Didn't somebody go across like the English Channel or something on like a hoverboard or something? I feel like that's a thing. Was it a thing? I could be lying. My apologies. Well, I, I'm, I have to check it myself. It's, I've heard something like that, but I couldn't verify. Uh, not that we're really playing it that uh, tight here. It's, it's a bit of a bit slipshod, really. Just kind of wing it as I go. Oh, um, well, well, to go back to your question before we continue on, uh, but basically I generally factor in about, I figure about 20% of the internet, that there are folks that are, that are trolling and stuff like that. So when I figure out about that number, along with figuring out that about 80% of statistics are BS, the internet makes sense to me. Yes. And no one should really assume that everyone they interact with online is totally sincere. Look, I like trolls. Uh, mostly because... In my experience, I've always felt that trolls prompt you to reconsider what's actually important. Uh, is this worth getting so pointlessly upset about? 
Right, right. It's kind of, and see, here's the thing, and people will make fun of me for this, but that's perfectly fine. I support their freedom of speech to do so. I have a belief in the concept of the noble troll, in that I believe there's also different genres. You might have your straight up, uh, quote unquote, shit posting, uh, where maybe you're just trying to tear somebody down, you're launching the ad home attacks, you're using some really dank beans, and you know, hey, that's fine. If you have freedom of speech, as long as you're on site and violence and you abide by freedom of speech as we know it, that's fine. It's just, just because you can doesn't always mean you should and in that i mean what if you take a particular instance where i believe i think it was, it was maybe britney pettibone or somebody that was controversial in a lot of people's minds that uh, wasn't a big fan of immigration she was criticizing a periodical i think it may have been vox or another leftish uh thing because they were saying the declaration of independence was like anti-immigrants or something along those lines and they're kind of going at each other i'm like all right so we got two blue checks here so i, I go into the declaration of independence after i was listening to i think uh what was it uh mitch on uh, rhetorical entertainment over on that channel there uh quick little plug but uh as far as that goes you know reading through the declaration of independence i'm listening and I get to a part, and then I actually go back and I read it. I'm like, one of the grievances against the king of England was he was making it hard for people to immigrate into the country and become citizens. He was almost like can, kind of can, trying to control the population. And I'm like, hold on a second. Let me, let me just take a quick screenshot about this uh, uh, piece of the uh, Declaration of Independence. We'll actually add a little context with a little blurb. Tweet to both of them. So all of a sudden, it's like, all right, you have the periodical that's kind of trying to take the piss out of the Declaration of Independence showing that, oh, by the way, it actually does support immigration. And then you have a person who isn't a big fan of immigration showing that the document that she was defending supports immigration. I just I just like to try to have people's minds turn into a pretzel and everything, and I, I don't think I got a response. Well, that's probably because it did put the mind in the pretzel. Cognitive distance is painful. Uh, also, bias is everywhere, and people don't really like considering that they're not absolutely right about any given topic they're discussing. Would be fine if they didn't respond to this more often than not with just pure bile and hostility. But well, hey, well, well, look, well, the crime is its own punishment. You look at the people who take this all so very seriously, they are some of the most miserable people imaginable. As somebody that fell into that category at some points of my life, um, and still to an extent uh, now as well, um, the ability to try to mold your mind in certain ways and to fold and go through all these different mental gymnastics to justify your own existence, it can be very, it can be very painful, like you were saying, Ark. And uh, as somebody that has done this a lot in my past, it's like, all right, let me take a look at what's actually going on, and then I kind of go to it's like, oh. If I actually accept who I am, and that's why I generally promote myself, I'm a terrible human being. It's just, as long as I start off from there, it's kind of like a movie. If you happen to see a movie, you assume it's going to be terrible, and it's halfway okay. It's like, oh, that was a decent flick. You have a more positive aspect about it, but you also terrible have to be human honest. Being, but why, by what metric? Self-identification. Hmm. It's a good question. That's, that's my current answer I'm utilizing. Look, um, I don't... You have to go into detail for I to be able to agree or disagree. And maybe it's not really necessary. Certainly, a lot of people screw up a lot of things. Which should be expected because we're all very flawed creatures. But not necessarily terrible. Terrible is, say, I don't know. Well, I'd say it goes more along the lines as we have to acknowledge that we're all human beings and we're all perfectly imperfect creatures of the capacity to do great ill as well as do great good that's the thing it's kind of like the Jungian uh you have the shadow there and you also have I I, I forget my Jung but basically you also have a more positive side of things which I do truly believe that yes while the past is prologue and the future is now it's up to us for what we do with it because if free will is an actual thing that we're going with it's like we we can change it and if we could just clear the cachet of hatred from our heads and hearts it's like dude if we actually focused on like doing positive good rather than all the time energy and resources we spend on just battling each other dude we could be pushing star trek stuff in a millennia oh easily but... easily now i'm full agreement with that and uh, as we mentioned before, there's really a lot of room for common ground, but I don't think common ground is something that a whole lot of people really want. 
Especially when it's so profitable I, to play their bases against the others. It, well, well, that's that's the thing. It's like you look at where the incentives are, and I would use citation of uh, the amazing atheist going back to the 2012 election, because he even said at one point, it's like, all right, he did a political video, and I believe he was taking the piss out of Sarah Palin. It happened to be very popular. He got a million sub views. He's like, yeah, I got to send a check for like four grand. It's like, oh, this is popular. You just take the piss out of people that other folks don't like and we get paid. Hmm. What are we incentivizing here? And that's why it's like, yeah, I get it. YouTube cracks down and this and that. But it's like, were we not incentivizing? Maybe not the best of things. Yes, it's exciting, but I feel like there's a time and place from that. It's like, okay, you can just kind of, it's kind of like when you have like the whole Kumite thing. It's like, oh yeah, people want to yell and scream at each other. I mean, even uh, even Mr. Medicare said at one point, it's like, dude, it's like my morning Jerry Springer and stuff. It was entertaining because rule 14 of the internet, everyone loves a good dumpster fire. So you just factor that in and it's like, it makes sense. It's just, that's kind of like two folks fighting outside of a bar and breaking bottles and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you can do that, but it, it, you can also do it better. You can kind of do like the whole Professor Peterson versus Zizek, where people would, I would consider that more of a mixed mental arts. Well, what I would note in that case is that the comparison to a bar fight is actually quite good. After all, both are ultimately unsustainable. Hmm. Well, I mean, we, we, we're also like digitally surfing while drunk. Because basically, I think there were a couple studies that said our inhibitions on the internet, the sheer fact that we're going through something and you don't actually physically have a person, an actual human being right in front of you, like it's the equivalent to, to basically acting like you're 10 drinks in. So I factor that in, having done, helped out as a door guy at a, at a establishment before that the more intoxicated people get often. They, they get more hostile or unreasonable. Not always, but... No, uh, well, for instance, I've taken great pleasure in the fact that I'm very happy and drunk. Um, again, that's what it really does depend on person to person. I think uh, in this case, it's more along the lines of, are you holding in something? Are you very angry otherwise? Is that what the alcohol is letting loose? Oh. Well, I mean, it does reveal different layers of ourselves, because, I mean, if ogres are like onions and people at time can be like ogres and thereby humans are like onions as well. Well, certainly layers in the case, although I do endorse people not smelling like onions. Oh, yeah, Look, I mean, it's I... very easy to maintain basic personal hygiene these days, and I think this is a great trend that we should continue to pursue. And I will die on this hill if necessary. Hmm. Mark just well, doesn't want to cry in people's presence. But uh, wh why not? That's why I have the sponges installed. Um, <laughs> look, I have the, done nothing. Look, it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm a tremendous recluse, and that's why you are all interacting with me at this extraordinary remove, even in fiction, such as here. Um, but certainly I think we'd all treat each other a lot better even if we can't see each other directly. So are are you part arachnid? Oh, brown recluse? No, no, no. Okay. My apologies for my misspecying. That's, it's all right. I can take these things in stride, and I think everyone should be able to. Well, how many people do you know that are like you? Good point. Still... I think everyone should be able to. It would be a net good. Do not flip out whenever someone doesn't acknowledge every aspect of your personality or presence the way you want to be. Oh, just, I, I, just I, makes I, sense besides. Look, you want someone to uh, treat you well, shrieking like a bat out of hell, the slightest provocation, not going to, not going to help you get there. Well, I mean, if you're an infant or a small child, I mean, that's how yes. children are. If you're an infant or a small child, then in that context, you're absolutely right. And no criticism is meant to any infants or small children out there on the internet. Although, where are your parents? Well, well to be fair, Ark, I mean, it could also be Halloween. Because, I mean, every once in a while, I mean, it's Halloween. You're out there at night and see a full moon. Just want to do some howling. Want to do some what? Some howling. The moon. Like, ow! Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with that? The song of my people. I, it, I have no me? objection to that. Okay. Then, if you have wolves or 
other predatory animals in the area might not be the best idea, but otherwise, go hog wild. Certainly Halloween is one of my favorite times of the year. You you don't like wolves? I don't like being mauled by wolves. Oh. I wouldn't endorse it for anyone. What what if they're nice wolves? Then they're perfectly fine, as long as they don't try to maul me. Okay. But the, that should be low, especially here in the Abyssal facility. Um, right. Did you have any questions for me? Oh. I, I thought I was asking you questions. Did you? Oh. I oh, yes, that's quite reckless. I'm sorry, I didn't... I didn't register that as being an actual question. Uh, no worries. Well, we'll take a quick pause. Anything in the chat I should be brought up to speed on from? From it. Um... Uh, Steam is not a blue airplane. It, but blue goes slower than red. Are you calling Steam slow? <laughs> no, I'm trying to help her. Steam, you may want to rethink your color schemes. No, she's not a blue airplane. Oh, 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 not. I forgot the prefix. Yeah. Who accused her of being a blue airplane? No one. Apparently me. I apologize. Nope. Okay. Is that it? Really, the only. Oh wait, one more thing. Um, uh, Bony Shivers, Bonesy Shivers donated a lemon. Thank you, Bonesy Shivers. No attendant message there. Mm, well, PewDiePie with like raising his eyebrows. Beyond that, no. Oh, yeah. congrats, congrats to Felix. Congrats to Felix. He got married as well. Oh, oh yeah. Can you guys same uh, share the same anniversary? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I. I think uh, Felix's is like a few days ahead. I could be wrong. Oh, so not as much. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that, yeah, uh, PDP, because I refuse to say the other one, got married sometime before <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Nyes. Hmm. Well, as long as we have the update, and I, I apologize, I may have infected our Twitter with a digital plague. No, no. Uh, the concern is noted. Well, of course, we'll do some thorough checks later on, but strictly speaking, we have several alarms that would be going off if that were the case, and I have no alarms prepared to go off, so naturally it must not have happened. If you have a biopsy, please don't show me the photos. It makes me kind of crazy. I really wasn't planning on it. Um, look, that I don't even generally toss out my birthday. Biopsy photos are right out. Well, I never said you had to send your biopsy photos. No, third point. Not something I generally do, though, so you don't have to worry. Hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> right, so did you hear about the six seniors uh, arrested for sexual activity at Connecticut Conservation Area? Uh, there, the yes. You have heard about this. Okay, because it was actually covered in the last side quest, but it's just so bizarre I felt like going over again, and it was worth it because on side quest they pinned it on the killing jester, who we all now as the Killing Joker. So, let's oh. see if we can find him in the photos. Wait, hold on. Is that... Uh, no, no. Then again, he, he does have the, uh, the Realm of Magic win his, in his forte. Mm. Well, as far as I know, Killing Jester has no magical ability whatsoever. But we would also recognize him if he was in this lineup and... Uh, we're missing two here, but this is also in Connecticut. I don't think Joker had the time to fly down there, get busted in orgy, and then get back in time for the show. It, what What if he teleported? Again, as far as I'm aware, the killing Joker, in reality, also has no magical abilities that have been so much as claimed. Does he have a registered DeLorean? Mm, pretty sure that's a no. Uh, okay. If Killing Joker is still in the chat somewhere, if you want to prove me wrong, we can we can address this. Now, hypothetically, they've got a spaceship. I suppose if they could hop into that and get there and back, maybe. But again, we would definitely recognize them in the lineup. Those arrested, ranging in age from 62 to 85, are accused of meeting up for sexual activity at the Grace Richardson Conservation Area in Fairfield. Police set up surveillance and saw several violations. The arrestees include an 82-year-old man and an 85-year-old woman. Police arrested 67-year-old Daniel Dobbins and 62-year-old John Lenartz for breach of peace and public indecency. They were apparently the kiddos of the pack. 
According to the Connecticut Post, uh, Dobbins was arrested May 2017 for walking around New Canaan Park naked. He reportedly told responding officers he was naked for medical reasons. Well, I mean, 60 is the new 30. I think some people may have said at some point, maybe. You have um, the Joker saying, stop you clown, no mohawks, no mohawks. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. It, does he's he right. Wear... Not one of these has a mohawk. That that is true. But then again, he's he's kind of like uh, Dilophosaurus from uh, Jurassic Park. He can frill it up at uh, a moment's notice. See, mm. I'm thinking um, he has uh, gotten extensive cosmetic surgery, gone to Connecticut, uh, done this act, come back, get the surgery to change back. And then was the part of side quest. Are, are are you calling the Joker Jeffrey Epstein? Yes. Okay. Okay. No, that that's too far. Far where? The killing Joker does not deserve any comparisons whatsoever, to Jeffrey Epstein. I'm offended on his behalf. Oh, I'm so. Oh, I just realized what I said was a very bad thing. My apologies. It 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 is, but yeah. I, I I inadvertently told a dude that I like. I alleged he was a pedophile. Wow. Yes, that's no. And Joker deserves better than that. He's a terrible, terrible person uh, who's just been absolutely vicious to me personally, but he doesn't deserve that. He's so nice behind the scenes, but he does play a, a good uh, ass type character. He, he did just say, I hate you, Froman, and then I booped him. You, you censored him? I booped. No, no, he actually oh, typed like, like, boop. Because oh. he thinks that's very cute. That's adorable. It is. I like Froman. <laughs> uh, I still have reservations. No, Ms. Actually, Steam says he, he was with me when uh, this happened. He's innocent. He has an alibi. Wait, hold on, wait a second. Miss, Miss Team is from the 1800s. He does have a DeLorean. Exactly! See? Hypothetically, Steam went to him, and I, you know, I'm all for this. Uh, if she wants to go down to Florida and move in with the Joker, it's... It's okay, I'll understand. You can always postpone those uh, Frenemies Forever episodes until you get settled in there. I thought he was a New York boy. Uh, Joker? I'm, I'm pretty sure he's Florida, man, or was. Oh. Oh, my uh, the difference being that he survived. Oh. Joke, like uh, the killing joke has said, control your staff, Slappy. <laughs> he can't control his staff. It's <laughs> uncontrollable. <laughs> you think Steam works for me? <laughs> I, hey, 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 listen. I think... Tony, Tony Stark had Jarvis, and the director has Froman. I mean, you can argue upon which one is more useful, but uh, it's up to interpretation. Well, I was more talking... So... Oh, that from works me. Well, suppose sort of. In a weird roundabout sort of way, but it's more like. See, I think that's more of a dick innuendo. More of a <laughs> problem to remove him overall. Look, it's all within tolerances in any case. Now, this is actually a very interesting article. The uh, youngest was apparently Otter D. Williams at 62 and just went up from there. I'm guessing they left Richard Butler and Joyce Butler out of the line up here, being the really old ones. I understand they weren't arrested at the time because they were afraid they might die in jail. So, you know, just a bit of a fine there. Wow. You know, I, you can see the logic here. If you're that close to the grave, then... I really, what, what's the worst that can happen? This. And they weren't even brought in. Also, we're not hearing you. You've, you've, you've muted yourself. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's not like anybody, anybody or anything would ever go wrong on the internet, like I, I promised in my video. But uh, yes, about that. Uh, wait, director, are are you insinuating that they were attempting to have an orgy, knowing that uh, the stress on their hearts may do them in, and thereby they would end up as compost? It's terrible. So I think it's more the lines. The they were quite aware that at some point their hearts were going to give out and wind up a compost anyway. So. What the hell? Let's have an orgy in the local park. Oh, I, see, I just figured they were Randy and they like nature. Although, strictly They're speaking, going out. I don't think this qualifies as an orgy. Do oh, we oh, well, you know, I could be wrong. I and mean, the dudes might be very bi indeed and just 
Traditionally, I believe this would be more likely to be something that we call a gangbang. Is there a difference? Isn't it like in an orgy, the number of participants are closer to 50-50? Not exactly, but closer to it? Well, well in this case... It well, it would be closer to 50-50 if you're pairing up male-female, if you're just going with whoever gets to whoever first, then it's always equal unless the number is odd. Were they utilizing protection? Because that's an important thing in our society. You know, uh, they don't actually say. We will have to hope that they were protecting themselves. Well, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, and I hope the um, um, 67 year olds, the, the new 30 as you put it, 62 and 67, took, took it in consideration that with the others that much more advanced, maybe they weren't quite as concerned about their own health and safety so they should perhaps take greater care of their own. Um, hopefully, everyone here, if they were incredibly discourteous to any other park goers at the time, because that's that's going to ruin a picnic. Just yeah. so yeah. you break out the sandwiches, you start spooning out some uh, casserole, and then you look over there and it's grandpa orgy. Yeah, I, I mean, what... into that. Probably not the average. Picnic goer. It, it, it wasn't in a picnic sanctioned area. It, one more detail they don't actually uh, clarify. Authorities say the area is advertised online as a place to meet up for sex, and police will continue to monitor the activity there. So, if you're in Connecticut and you see an ad for this random park area you can totally pork strangers in, you should probably consider that maybe the police are also aware of it. it so it's not private property. Nope. Doesn't look like it. Ooh. I mean, is it designated for a sex grounds? Uh, not officially. Officially, it's a conservation area. Then who is promoting it as a sex grounds? Someone who... Um... A, a person on the internet? As well, far as we know. For all we know, it might have been uh, Mr. and Mrs. Butler here. Oh. I mean, it's a conservation area, so these guys could have just interpreted it as in conserving their sex, li sex lives it, with each other. It, well, I mean, I, that's an interpretation from you. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not sure how... I, I, well, I mean, to, actually, hold on. If you're over 40, that's actually a protected class, because we wouldn't want to be ages, so if we're cons serving our senior city... Well, I mean, we're human beings. We are part of nature is an argument. Um, if this, that's the argument in court, I hope to see another article about this in the near future. I never saw it was a good argument. Say, so, how do you feel about cannibalism? But aside from maybe chewing on one's own dead skin in the process of removing it, yeah, you should try to avoid eating each other. It just doesn't yeah, work look, well. Let's, let's be fair, if you're um, being technical about it, just about every person watching this stream, including all of us, have at some point ingested human blood. It, it, well, yeah, and a fair number of spiders. Now, that one's a myth. Is it? Yeah, it, I, like, because it's supposed to be like eight a year. Um, I think the absolute most is supposed to be like two in your lifetime. Riddle me this, Roman. Have you ever brushed your teeth before going to sleep and then woke up with a, with your mouth and your breath just, just doesn't seem quite right? Usually because I'm dehydrated, but yes. Okay. That's all. And uh, we've just made all the hypochondriacs in the audience incredibly uncomfortable. I see oh, what you've I done there. Sorry. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Look. Jokes. If they're watching this show, they're probably pretty used to all sorts of absurd, unexpected things occurring. Well, we are so, talking about cannibalism, so... Yes, and that was a complete non-sequitur, as far as anyone can prove. Look, the original title of this article was asking, Why is cannibalism such a deep human taboo? And this isn't the first time I've seen that question asked. Uh, legendary atheist, edgy boy, Richard Dick Dawkins has long been 
a proponent of ethical cannibalism. In fact, that's apparently why he's really excited about bioreactors putting out cultured meat. Because, you know, he'd love to have himself a human burger and doesn't understand why this is not the greatest of ideas. Which... See, see, Director, my, my only issue with that is I just recently discovered what part of the pig a hot dog comes from. And it took me many years to figure that one out. And now it's just, don't get me wrong, I've had some decent vegetarian stuff, like some burgers and stuff, they can almost pass, but it's like, e I, I don't know, do we, do we need to feed it to people first and just tell them afterwards, or we, we need people's consent, right? We need consent. Ideally, ideally. Certainly I don't want to be, in this, you know, snuck a long pork hot dog. But, you know, it seems a very simple question to me. Why? Why is cannibalism a bad idea? Why Why is treating it as anything other than taboo a very bad idea? And oh, I might oh, say... Didn't, uh, didn't one of those journalists indeed eat, like, human brain or something? Uh, what was his name? Like Reza or something? Reza? Reza? There, there's... My apologies. There's various um, people who have eaten uh, human flesh for journalism and such. Uh, I can't, I don't know the names off the top of my head. I do know that they reported that it tastes like, um, baby cow. Veal. Mm. Ah. I always confuse veal and venison. They both have V. Well, yeah. all I know is that I believe social fabric holds together much better when we can reasonably assume that our peers don't have any secret craving for our flesh and or blood. But, but if they did, should they broadcast that? Is it a warning, or does that just make people feel uncomfortable? Um, I'm, I'm going to guess that it would make people uncomfortable. Certainly, the honesty would be appreciated, especially in regard to someone who doesn't want to be killed and eaten. But uh, they might keep their guard up a bit more if they know someone has a big hankering for human meat. Yeah, John, just as somebody that who happens to, at times, hang out with different folks that identify as cannibals on the internet... Um, I mean, they're people too and stuff, and that's why I discourage them and just uh, just let them know. Like anything aside from just like uh, some dead skin off of people's feet, that's not cool, man. Look, uh, if they have volunteers want to give them dead skin or something, then I'm disgusted immensely. But hey, no, no problem there. And of I course, mean, there are the uh, internet vampires who are constantly chugging down each other's. Uh, dude, dude, the, the thing is with that, they're not just confined to the internet. That's the thing, because, okay, so so one night while we were out and drinking and stuff, I had a couple of friends, and we were out, we were doing some things, and then uh, this kid, who I didn't even really know who it was, it was from, it was somebody's brother from a family that I happened to piss off back in the day, but that's that's a separate story. Uh, but essentially, they came up to us, and they were trying to start stuff, and I'm just, I'm just like, all right, this cop's right over there. I'm just kind of like rolling my eyes, getting all pissed off because I'm rolling my eyes. Ooh, they're going to do stuff. They eventually leave. And there was a, just a random kid behind us. It was just, he's like, yeah, we got you, man. We got you, man. He was standing with us. I didn't know where he was from. So I thought my friends knew him. So eventually we went, go back to my place and we're like drinking some beers. We're having a good time. And then, then one of my buddies leaves. And as soon as he leaves, this this dude starts getting kind of creepy and stuff. He starts talking about how he's a vampire and he, he, may, uh, he may give us the gift. And I'm like, okay, well, he's, he's obviously joking. And, and then he starts to bite his wrist. And I noticed along his wrist, there's a, there's a number of marks that happen to coincide with certain uh, dental, dental marks as well from one's mouth. And then at that point, I expressed some concern to my other buddy who's like, peace out memes, time to hit the old dusty trail. So at this point, I'm like, all right, so I, I can't probably leave this kid in my house locked in here with me throughout the entire night and then any of my other roommates because he might bite our necks and try to suck our blood. So I'm like, that's not cool. So eventually I convince him. It's like, oh, we need to we need to get you home before the sun comes up. And somehow along that uh, probably like 20 minute drive, I convinced him that I was I was one of him. And I was part vampire as well. So as soon as I dropped him off at like 5.07 in the morning, the sun is just getting ready to peek through. He's like, are you going to be able to get home in time, man? I'm like, yeah, man, I got it. And he's like, you know what? You go down this way. You take a left. You take another left. And then you take another left. And at this point, I'm like, all right, he's just sending me a complete circle. All right, man, peace out. I drive. I'm like, all right, I got rid of that one. So uh, time to go to sleep. Well handled. Very well uh, handled. It is what it is. No, oh, no. Um, look, there are so many worse ways to handle it. It was well handled. Thank you. 
Everything in context. I mean, there's hypothetically a better way to have handled it. I just don't really know what it could be. Everyone got home. No one got bitten. He wasn't down for it. Great outcome. Well, I mean, on the hierarchy of things to do, I mean, what else are you going to do? Try to shove a wooden stake through a dude man's chest? I mean, that's not cool. You're just being a dick at that point. And, yes. and make it harder. this is a fine example of also not taking people too seriously. You should always you should always allow for the fact they might just be barking mad, which should have your guard up. But it's certainly no reason to say... Knock them down and drive a stake through their heart. Yeah, I, I mean, I have to acknowledge at this time, Twilight was also quite popular, so I, I figure there may be some correlation there. Twilight was popular, and he was... But he shouldn't have feared daylight then. I mean, if he was a Twilight vampire, he just would have sparkled. I, I didn't watch Twilight or anything. I suppose it's on the list of things do. All I know I is after... I didn't watch it either. Well, this sort of thing just gets out there and you learn so much more than you really ever wanted to. Um, look, it's an um, open secret that I don't care for vampires, even in fiction. I didn't like it when it was Interview the Vampire in Lestat. I didn't like it when it was Stephanie Meyer in the Twilight series, but there's one thing I will say in defense of Twilight. It made vampires intensely uncool, and for that, I am largely grateful. No, uh, no judgments or slanders to people who do like vampires or being vampires, say like Ms. Midnight, um, but mm, they're, they're terrible. They've always been terrible. Even in fiction, my good villains, terrible everything else. My my only concern with that director is you're not a Leslie Nielsen fan. Oh, Dracula Dead and Loving It. I barely remember the film, but I have no objection to that. Oh, that interview from a vampire. Two different things, aren't they? Yes, one of them is much better, in my opinion. Uh, gotcha. My apologies. Yeah. Look, also, I was a colossal nerd. This I know will shock some of the audience. I spent a fair bit of time playing role playing games. Around the time vampires were so cool, you had 30 million different Lestats, Lestats, Lesturts, and every single derivative variation of the god-awful name and character everywhere. Wait, what? Want to kill some orcs and here comes some idiot vampire asshole. No! Oh, oh, because he was trying to create an undead army? Eh. Well, he's just following his nature. Yeah, none of these were the original article. It's like if you take a image, put it on the photocopier, then put the photocopied image on the copier. Just do that infinitely and then give it to a small retarded child. And there you have your stats that I was dealing with. So that's probably a large part of why I hate vampires, even in fiction, so very, 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 very much. Well, I, I think... Miserable, pathetic, we dark, romantic, goth, Superman assholes. No! See, I, I think we should treat people, people, people who have disabilities with, with respect, and we also have the internet so we can actually, like, root source files and stuff now to make the uh, degradation of just copying the same article again and again, like all our, uh, or at least many of our uh, teachers back in the day, uh, I don't know, higher quality. Look, I like vampires best when they couldn't go out in daylight, beard garlic, and could be put down with a stake and a hammer. See, my, my epitome is up to Blade. Because once you get up to Blade, it's like, all right, what is Blade? He's a hybrid. He's got all of their strengths and none of their weaknesses. And he has a freaking light laser sword, so that's badass. I don't remember the laser sword, but I didn't follow oh. the comics. The movies were, I thought, were quite fun, though. Do you hear they're going was... to reboot Blade? E yes, yes, I heard. So that means they're going to make him Muslim, I hear? I oh. I don't oh, think well, that's I'm... really... That, that... Well, I mean, that's I, I, I'm not sure they ever touched on Pawn Blade's religion and the other stuff at all. Uh, I mean, I don't really have anything wrong with that because at that point, I'm like, wait a second. If we can change things up, does at some point, if they reboot Blade again, can can I be Blade? Can I, can, can I be a Jewish vampire? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. A Jewish scaly vampire. Dude, he just ultimate movies like a vampire. Oh, it could be like a Dracula. That'd be sweet. Eventually, the pendulum is going to swing back and we'll see what happens. Um... For my part, where was I going with this? Look, oh, so long as he has the sparkle in daylight, I'm fine. And 
making a Muslim is a trivial thing, but I think they missed an opportunity there. If they're going to make a point of giving a faith to Blade, oh, come on, he had to be Sikh. Uh, was he? See, I, I don't... Well, I don't... How much do you know about the Sikhs? I... I... I hear Precious very... little, because they don't have any representation, which is another argument in my favor for making Blade a Sikh. But, most importantly in regards to rebooting Blade, Sikhs are obligated to, at all times, have a blade on them, a sword. Generally, it's a ceremonial amulet with which to strike down the evil one. If that doesn't resonate with the mythology of Blade, what does? Yeah, that's a very strong argument there, Arkadar, and I, I, that's actually the first time I've heard that, and that's a fair, fair point. Fair taken. Hmm. So, maybe we can get a Twitter campaign going, but probably not, because the Sikhs aren't inclined to be concerned about this. As near as I can tell, I've never even heard of an unpleasant Sikh. Maybe, maybe it could be Blade's cousin. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, uh, well, that's kind of scary, actually, because if his cousin turned away from the way to become a Sikh, then, strictly speaking, Muslim Blade might be obligated to murder them. Well, I never said, well, if it's a cousin, and if by marriage you happen to have somebody... Well, they that started as a Sikh, they should be all right. Maybe, maybe that was it. Oh, oh, and then you could call him the Seeker. dun dun, dun. Hey, given their own original character, that's even more progressive, because you're not just... Retexturing a hand me down. I don't well, know why they're content with that. Yeah, you're coming up with new canon, new intellectual property, so you can sell more action figures. We could all use more original characters anyway, which is why I think we wish we'd stop uh, lengthening those copyrights. Yeah, they're looking at it. Fingers crossed. Hmm. But uh, back to the topic of cannibalism. For humans, though, cannibalism is the ultimate taboo for some reason. In fact, our aversion to cannibalism is so strong that consent and ethics count for little. No, I would say they probably count for a fair bit. I, I mean, I mean, wasn't it like Jesus or somebody that said, thou shalt not eat thy neighbor? It, you know, even if they didn't, they probably should have. I think it's one of those things that they normally just like to stress would like not to stress because they would hope it would not be necessary. That's why it, cannibalism isn't technically legal in a lot of places, because they just don't really want to have to stress, you goddamn savages, don't eat each other. It, well, I'm not sure if it's Washington or Oregon that recently passed an ordinance where you could actually let uh, decaying corpses actually go into like the ecosystem, you could actually harvest... Uh, vegetation from them but to be fair uh in the movie alive when they actually crashed in i think the andes mountains it's literally like all right we're stuck up there in a mountain range we have no idea if we're ever going to get rescued there's somebody that's already dead and dude man pulls out a spoon and starts eating the dude's butt uh, but that's an extenuating circumstance i would yes. say again context is almost everything so in that case i don't think it's right to say that they're monstrous for doing that but uh you know just because you're feeling a bit peckish that would, that would be something else. Like, yeah, you know, someone I, drops that next I, to you and you're like, ah, you know, I had some sandwiches packed, but Bob's looking really good. It's always a good idea to pack some sandwiches, and I just need to do a quick public service announcement. Hey, Jensen, no pulling out a spoon and eating people. Thank you. Uh, Laszlo Panaflex uh, donated an ice cream. Oh, thank I like you, it. Laszlo Panaflex. Your donations of ice creams is much appreciated. I, with the lemon uh, from earlier, we can probably make some nice cinnamon, uh, no, lemon ice cream. Ooh. I, I, I am accusing Steam of uh, whitening her teeth with pungent urine. <laughs> does that work? It does. That's what the Romans did. But it, you shouldn't do it now. Yeah, have you tried it? No. Why? I don't. <laughs> because uh, probably because we have we have some wonderful whitening options that don't involve rubbing in pungent urine from me. I, I can't free. <laughs> Do you produce them on your own? You would own the means of production. 
Oh, didn't that gamer girl try to do that or something? Are you talking? Um, uh, it was fake, though. So yeah, like she ten grand for a jar of urine. That may or yeah, may no, actual. she. Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain that's fake. But yeah, no. Um, what is her name? Um, Bell, something. Bell, Bell Delphine. Delphine. Yes. Yep. The uh, originator of selling bath water, which again I really don't begrudge them at all. Someone buys it, why the hell not? Hashtag capitalism. Lovely young yeah, woman exactly. that knows how to run a business. Yeah, uh, discuss me. I wouldn't do it, but if someone wants to, then <laughs> why not? Good, good. <laughs> it's niche market, capitalizing on it. It's fair. No one's being forced Steve to. Is... She's not breaking into people's houses, putting gun there, says, and order my bathwater now. Not happening. So where's the objection, really? Steam is confirming what I have said about. Uh... Her using urine. <laughs> oh, oh! It did it work well. <laughs> Can we see some pics? I'm sorry, that may be too forward of me. My apologies. Like a b before urine, after urine. <laughs> are, are we looking at porcelain levels? Are we looking at like just kind of like a matte white? Are we talking about like a Nissan Altima white? <laughs> I'm unfamiliar. I'm actually more disgusted now than we're discussing cannibalism. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well. I was to say, I, I think it's probably a good thing that humanity generally frowns upon eating human. Mm. Like, we can tolerate like, extreme cases of consent. Uh, this hypothetical case of a man who gave permission to his friend to eat parts of Monzi died natural causes. Okay, that's already technically legal. Disgusting. Um, I don't approve. It, Legal. It, it, but no, Not no, no, something direct, to encourage, though. D director, I think I may have just discovered a potential phallic uh, fallacy here. What about fellatio? Yeah. Um, you're dealing with technicalities here. Again, strictly speaking, you are ingesting fluids. Well, uh, that depends. It's, maybe they don't. Maybe they, maybe they spit. But strictly speaking, yes, you are ingesting fluids from another human being, so I guess that could be argued as a form of cannibalism, but certainly one that very few people complain about. Oh, well, I mean, somebody will... It's very complain. unlikely to result in murdering and consuming your peers. Yeah, but it may initiate trips to the doctor. That's why people should be honest and, and use proper protection. Better to have it and not need it than need and not have it. Um, Absolutely. Take care of yourselves out there. Hmm. Also, uh, if you could keep it to your bedrooms or private domiciles to where people don't get ambushed while trying to have a picnic in a conservation area, that would be lovely. But also, you know, save you a lot in legal fees, I think. Just you can also keep stream on hub to try to monetize if you want. They're pretty inclusive. Hey, but you might not want to go to the places advertised. After all, it could just be the police. Looking to keep their quotas up. It's unfortunate. Or fortunate. I don't even know anymore. We have more articles, a lot more articles, but we have two minutes remaining, so I don't know if we can go into this. What a man accused of shooting cat with a crossbow? That's horrible. Okay, have we confirmed this isn't Joker? We'll worry we'll, we'll about that later. Uh, I suppose another time we'll read Florida man in East Choke, Uber Eats driver who crashed his car, punch him in the face, and steal his bag. Apparently they were after his medication. It, his his bag of drugs or his bag of, like, McDonald's? Uh, I, so, uh, I'm not really sure. Those are both terrible Bag crimes. or something. So, Steam has asked me to say the truth, so I will say it. The truth. Oh, like Veritas? The truth has I been think said. So. Oh. oh, I have that. Yes. Eee! Virtue signal. Glenn Antonietti, 57, and his niece, Lisa Antonietti, of Hudson, Florida, have been arrested following an incident on Ridge Road in Port New Richie on August 19th, according to Pasco County Sheriff's Office. I'm sorry, I have to, I have to fill, finish this. The, after the pair had stopped to check on the driver, who had gotten into an accident, Lisa Antonietti 
allegedly picked up the victim's bag containing about 60 Xanax pills and started to walk away. Reports. Patch. When the driver confronted her, she allegedly choked him from behind. The pair are also accused of punching the driver in the face during the attack, according to WTSP. Lisa Antonetti then gave the driver his bag and walked away after witnesses intervened. I want to look at these ages again. Glenn Antinetti, 57, and his niece, Lisa Antinetti, 33. Which of these people looks like the younger one? I mean, director, I mean, to quote Lois Griffin, meth is one hell of a drug. Uh, speaking of Crystal, uh, Yonibs has just donated a diamond. Why, Ooh, thank you, Yonibs. Oh, uh, thank you also for reminding me that we need to reschedule some show visit thing last the Wednesday before last didn't go too well I and it the message falls in my court I'm aware that. we'll sort this out the message <clears throat> he said with that is uh speaking of Veritas oh Vincent Veritas yes you yeah. apparently said the magic word memes oh welcome Vince 52 52 33 52 33 oh well well I mean I don't know are they trans I'm skeptical. I mean, we just should, we shouldn't judge. We don't have all the information. We don't know, but trans or not, holy crap. Well, you, you don't have go their habits oh, somebody in an accident stealing their medicine. That's not cool. Nope. nope. Nothing, nothing excuses that particularly, yeah. Unless, of course, they were dying and somehow the Xanax was going to stop them. I, I don't think that's... It's a possibility. It is an argument. If that were the case. But give the evidence available. Doesn't seem very likely. And with that, we have been at this for over an hour, so it's time to wrap things up. Means of Destruction, thank you very much for joining me this Saturday broadcast. Uh, Roman, I assume you've promoted their links throughout the various chats? Uh, yeah, let me get to that. I skipped over. I apologize. <laughs> It's okay. Sometimes it might be better not to be known because it keeps you under many radars. So if and when things do happen and you may or may not become a public figure, um, you've you've controlled the majority of your own narrative. I, I, I feel like that's a very sleazy thing to say, but it's probably true. I think, uh, strictly speaking, people are going to make whatever narratives about you they want, ultimately. Just more lines of not giving them things they can use to prove it. Oh, no, no, that's why I've given them many things to prove it. That's why it's like I did the whole Dragon Bites thing, So I, and I thank you for letting me utilize that footage from your stream when we had uh, Tyro and Coate along with uh, Lo-Fi on, and you were having quite a day, and uh, somehow two, three of the nicest people I know when put in the same uh, digital chat room became horrifically racist. Um, I, I, yep. I don't know how it happened. Again, it wasn't all, but... Uh, well, these things... they weren't actually racist. It was just them being edgy, edgy, edgelords and probably for the very purpose of getting that footage of me trying to hmm. make the pain go away. Oh, I mean, it was highly comical. But uh, no, that's why I highlight what myself doing and saying many very silly things as people would see, but there's usually a purpose and... Uh, yeah, folks can get a few laughs. It's like, all right, you have enough stuff out there. I mean, President Trump, you got 30 years of him doing crazy, stupid shit that people are always criticizing. So it's like, you already have an established library. You have your levels of BS. And uh, I don't know. Does it normalize? Well, you know, if all else fails, if you're really concerned about that, you want to make sure there's as much misinformation out of you as possible, maybe you should contact Valkyrie or whoever creates the, created that wonderful program that allowed people to use Jordan Peterson's voice to say just whatever the hell. Give them they yours. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. So, so you, much you, information you, out there, no one will ever be able to prove it unless they've got you on video. Hmm. Until they manage to fake that too, which isn't too far off. We are in for so many interesting times. So We're there, dude. Any very, very interesting. Hmm. Well, that's it. We're definitely over schedule. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, all sense progress continues. Please be sure to tune in to the Dire Wolf media news recap later on and uh if you're into that whole side quest thing arcturus will be there on monday as well 
Until next time, ostensibly, progress continues. No. I like wizards. I have some misgivings. Mm, it's alright. I was a big cancer once. It was fun.